All right, uh, I want to talk about these things today. There are different, uh, different shapes and sizes, but they're all the same. Um, they're what's called a 50 ohm load, 50 ohm termination, uh, 50 ohm feed through termination, uh, 50 ohm th feed through, uh, you'll hear them called different things. They're just a connector, connector, and then a 50 ohm to ground. So the input impedance is 50 ohms. And they're generally used on an oscilloscope um, where uh, sometimes an oscilloscope has a button you can press to terminate the, the BNC on the oscilloscope to 50 ohms. But a lot of oscilloscopes don't have that feature and you have to supply your own 50 ohm load. Because a lot of um, circuits you're measuring stuff expect a 50 ohm load at the end of the cable. And if you're going to input that into this into the uh, oscilloscope, n not using a probe, but using directly into the uh, uh, BNC of an oscilloscope, you need one of these things. And so they're made by Tektronix and HP. And everybody who builds an oscilloscope, you know, Rigol, will sell you one of these. All right. And um, you might find one that just looks like this. And it has no markings at all, none. It won't. It does not tell you it's a 50 ohm thing. I had to put a, a little label on it to remind myself this is a 50 ohm thing. Uh, this is an older one. This was a Hewlett Packard. Um, it says Swiss made, so I don't. I don't know if uh, I don't know who Swiss comp Swiss companies are. Is it, is it uh, Vital was a Swiss company? I don't. I don't. I don't know. Or soon soon. Oh, I'm gonna get their names wrong. S Sunek is that their? Uh, I think this is a suit. So this particular cable is a, anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're Swiss made. Um, and uh, modern ones you'll see mostly look like this. They're like a little plastic box and uh, I put a big 50 ohm label on it so I don't have to read the fine print. Um, so yeah. Um, and so let's do the simple thing. Okay, let's get out a, uh, let's get out a, a meter here. And we will measure the oh, geez, that was loud. Uh, we will measure the uh, the homage without trying to get a uh, glare on the camera here. Let's turn this on. Okay. Uh, so let's try this one. This one says it's uh, 50 ohms, and this one says it's uh, 50 ohms, and this one says it's. 50 ohms, and this one says it's 50 ohms. Okay, so we have a bunch of 50 ohm things, right? Um, but uh, I just measured them at DC. Um, are they 50 ohms at a frequency, right? And that's kind of like antenna matching and stuff, right? And they're marked on here, like attenuators are marked at how, how far up you can go. This one says it's good from DC to 300 megahertz. Uh, this one says it's good from DC to one gigahertz. And this one doesn't say anything at all because there's no markings at all on it, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can't measure them on this thing first and see what that tells us. All right, I'm gonna turn the tracking generator on. I'll set the level to, let's say, uh, minus 10 dBm. I'll store it and normalize it and change reference to 90%. So now I have a straight line. And then I'm going to take my 50 ohm load and I'm going to put it on the input. And I'm gonna see uh, what happens as we go through it. Now this is a through measurement. It's kind of a strange measurement. But what we're doing is we're introducing an extra 50 ohms. And so whatever we started out with, if it's a 50 ohm system and we add another 50 ohms, we think we should drop the, uh, drop the signal down. So let's uh, change the units, the scale per division. Let's say it's three. And y you would expect to see about a 3 dB, about half, half of the power. Um, and this goes out to, th to three three gigahertz. So this thing is spec at, what was it, 300 megahertz. So let's put a marker at 300 megahertz. So right in there, um, let's see, let's change the frequency, total frequency to one gigahertz. Because that's the, that's the fanciest one we have is, is one gigahertz, okay? Let's zero the instrument out one gigahertz again. 
uh, tracking generator, uh, store reference. There we go. I'm going to straight line, and we'll put in our we'll put in our load. Yeah, there we go. So out to three uh, hundred megahertz. It's it's wavy because that's the the length of the cable. There's some mismatch in the instrument and stuff, but it's doing pretty well. It's probably doing pretty well out to about 500 megahertz. 500 is about there. So yeah, it's it's uh, over over spec'd, and uh, so that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and let's change our amplitude to one one dB per. Yeah, there we go. Um, and let's do a frequency start at one megahertz. We get rid of the first little first little bump there. I want I want to cal that out. Instead of going to zero, I'm going to go to one megahertz. And we will do a store reference again. Store reference. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. So we will put this one in, and we get uh, we get that kind of picture. Let's go ahead and hold that one. We'll go to trace B and uh, put in the next one. This is the same same one. I have two of the same model and it's measuring exactly the same, so I won't bother with that one. Uh, we'll go to the uh, kind of the uh, plasticky one. We'll put that one in there and that yeah, looks a little bit different. We'll uh, go ahead and Hold that one. We'll go to the next trace, and we'll put the last one, which is the one that is not marked anywhere. And we'll put that one in. Oh, it looks like it's actually a little bit better. Okay, so there we go. We have uh, different wiggles here, right? Let's put our let's put our marker back to 300 megahertz because that's the only specification we have. The only specifications we have on anything is one says it's good out to 300 and they're all acting exactly the same to 300 and then at one gigahertz, which is the stop here. So then they're all acting. Yeah, they're pretty close to one within half a dB of one another out there. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and I will save this. Uh, onto the flash card. All right. So, um, so that's one measurement. Um, let's go ahead and measure these on a VNA because VNAs are just sort of those things that measure what 50 ohms is, right? So yeah, let's go over and do that. All right. Uh, so here we are at my VNA. Let's go ahead and cal it. Uh, we are going between 300 kilohertz and one gigahertz. So let's do a cal one port. It says put in an open. Um, put in a uh, short. Oh, just dropped it on the ground. This little thing is good away. They are too tiny. I wish I had them all on a, a string or something. Uh, let's see here. Okay, we'll put in our put in our load. And you can see our we're looking at VSWR. It looks very, very nice. If you look at a Smith chart, we have a little spot right there in the center. Let's put scale back to one. One. Um, so there we are right in the center. Okay, so we have a very nice calibration. All right, so what we're going to do is we need an adapter because we have a BNC device. So I'm going to put an adapter on the front of the instrument and uh, things look pretty good. We're right over there. All right. Now um, I've cheated a little bit. I've put in a phase offset uh, electrical delay actually. Um, let's see here. Phase offset electrical delay. 
Oh, I don't have one in there. I thought I did have one in there. Let's see, Cal. Oh, I put it, I moved the Cal port over. Yeah, I did a Cal port extension, okay? Uh, otherwise, there's this extra length on here and it comes, comes around. And so I've uh, put in a Cal port extension uh, to take care of that electrical length. And so now our open is measuring in the right spot. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our uh, devices here. Um, we'll do them in the same order. These are the HP ones. Uh, we'll get a nice spot there in the middle. And remember, this is only spec to 300, but we're going out to 1,000. Uh, put this one on, another good measurement. Uh, we'll measure the uh, plasticky one. And a little bit of an inductance on that one. And we'll put in the one that's not marked anything. And we'll get a little bit of capacitance on that one. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and look at the VSWR. That's what most people care about probably on this channel. Uh, we'll go in the order, same order again. We'll put in the HP ones. Um, so we have pretty good SWR even at a, even at a, a gigahertz. Comes up to, um, where's my marker button? It maxes out around um, VSWR of 1.13. So yeah, very, very nice. Uh, we'll put in the other HP. Exactly the same thing. We'll put in the plasticky one. And this one's got some bumps in it. So at the max here, he's about 1.16, but then he bumps all the way up to 1.4. Now, if you're selling a device and its VSWR is 1.4 at a gigahertz and you specify it, I don't say they say what how good it is at one gigahertz, but 1.4 is not a bad match, right? So, okay, a gigahertz, but it, we, we can see that it does, uh, uh, it does have this little whip to do at the end. This is the one that was, uh, this is the one that went uh, uh, inductive, okay? And uh, we'll go back to SWR, okay. And then we'll go to the one that's not marked. Okay, this one here, it's not marked. And, uh, whoa, fail, fail, fail. Yeah, so this one, even though it looks okay on my other measurement, it's doing really poorly at this measurement. It's going up to 1 1.6, 1 1.65 uh, SWR. And it's, it's not flat anywhere. It's just a straight line from the get-go. So I'm not too crazy about that one. Uh, so I would say stay clear of those. Um, you probably would have imagined since it's kind of looks like it's kind of collinear everything it might be nicer but this this plastic one's doing a lot doing a lot better I think uh, so especially down here let's see where that dip is uh, marker so you know up to 800 megahertz you know it's doing it's doing just gangbusters right it's doing really really well um, anyway I'm kind of curious why they look so different on the spectrum analyzer, but I think it's probably just a matter of units and what is it that we're really measuring there as opposed to what is it that we're really measuring here. Um, I kind of like this measurement as kind of the holy grail, but um, hard to say. Um, some people are probably going to start commenting, well, you don't have anything on the other end. Uh, you need to have the other end loaded on something. But remember, generally, um, we're using this as a high impedance input to something. It either goes onto a voltmeter or it goes onto a, um, um, oscilloscope that has a particular, you know, properties themselves. If I load it down with a, with a 50 ohm load, uh, then it's it has a terrible SWR because we, instead of having 50 ohms, we now have 50 plus 50, 25 ohms, right? So that's not working. So it's like, well, what what do you load it with? What? And I don't think if I put my finger here, I don't think it really helps much. Yeah, it makes it worse, right? It makes it worse if I just load it with my finger. Um, let's go with one of the good ones. Let's go to the HP one. 
Um, and uh, let's load it with my finger. And yeah, it gets worse too, right? So uh, I don't think What the, what the device is trying to do is to give you 50 ohms and then allows you to have a high impedance measurement done. And so I think the, I think the, the measurement is valid here. Now the measurement on the VNA is 50 ohms to 50 ohms. The output of the tracking generator is 50 ohms. The input of the spectrum analyzer is 50 ohms. And then we're inserting another 50 ohms into the system. And so we're probably just messing it up. It's probably just not a, a valid measurement in the first place. You really should have done the measurement over here. Um, so anyway, there you go. Just some thoughts. And uh, uh, it looks as though these uh, unmarked ones are just, mm, I, would I would avoid those. The little plastic ones are much better than I thought they were going to be. Um, and the uh, HP ones are better than I thought they would be. They're only spec to 300 megahertz, but they, they operate the best. So, yeah, there you go. All right, that was a quick, uh, quick look at these 50-ohm uh, feed-through terminators.